We're back with this Marshall Origin 20. I did a playing video the other day, and it did not sound loud enough to me, and it did not feel right to me. And uh, the first video that came in on this app, uh, R7 here, it's missing right now, R7 was dark and discolored. It's a 150 ohm resistor that serves in place of a choke in this circuit to simplify, maybe to oversimplify, but for our purposes, R7 uh, takes the place of a choke. Um, and I put in a 200 ohm resistor, two watt, 200 ohm resistor until the two watt, 150 ohm resistor arrived. And this amp has had maybe 25, 30 minutes of play time. And that brand new 220 ohm resistor has darkened. The red bands there are now black and you can see discoloration in the middle. And I have this new 150 ohm 2 watt resistor ready to install on the amp. But I'm not going to do that yet because whatever was causing the heavy current draw that damaged the original one is obviously damaging the new one. Dam already damaged the new one with relatively uh, short playing time. And uh, some techs would have just put in this kind of 5 watt resistor there. Here's 150 ohm, 6.3 watt actually. And maybe it would hold up... Uh, but I think that there is way too much current present outside the parameters of the intended design. And that is what is causing that resistor to fail. I had hoped that it was the problem, the known problem with the output jacks in this amp. And I, I corrected that. You can see that in the first video. I'll have links to those two videos in the description below. But obviously there's something else. Now, there are various things it could be. Uh, no one likes all these hidden surprises in an amp. Uh, this amp uh, does variable voltage power scaling in a rather unusual way. Um, the HD comes in uh, from the rectifier here. I, mean, I guess I'll focus it better for you guys. Comes in to this, from the rectifier and it goes to a first filter stage cap. And after that, it goes through R7 to another cap, filter cap, and that's what feeds the center tap of the output transformer. And from there, in one branching, it goes to uh, a, a screen node, which is unused except for additional filtering, and then goes to a very traditional uh, ladder of filtering for the preamp stuff. But after R7, it also splits off through a MOSFET network. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of the way they've done this network. I've got the schematic. I'm not gonna go too in the weeds, but uh, this MOSFET uh, node uh, then goes to some separate filter caps, which feed the phase inverter and screen supplies. So when you adjust the three position front switch, high power, middle power, low power, you're reducing the voltage to the screen and phase inverter. Uh, uh, all the other voltages in the amp go up a little bit as that goes down. It's not a perfect Im implementation. But what they're trying to do is, should be fine in that it lowers the screen and phase inverter voltage without lowering, lowering the uh, voltage on the output tube plates and without lowering the preamp voltage. In fact, those go up a little bit. It's cathode biased self-biasing, that should not be a problem. So while I don't think the ex exa existing design is perfect, I don't see anything fundamentally wrong with it that would cause such an issue. Uh, but from my perspective right now, is there are a lot of things could be drawing too much current through R7 causing this failure. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm trying the, the easiest and very likely cause could be a, a bad pair of 34s. This amp had low output. So I've got another pair of EL 34s in, and I'm going to install this 2 watt 150 ohm resistor rather than that 6.3 one. 
6.3 watt resistor because I want to know if this thing starts to discolor the way that 200 ohm did. So we're going to install this, power it up, and watch to see what happens at that resistor. If nothing happens with the new output tubes, if everything's good after a couple hours of, of running with that output, new output tubes, I'll know that it was bad JJ's that happens. If the problem comes back, it is not the output tubes. And an another uh, 45 cent resistor will have given its life to test this amp. So let me solder this in place. We'll power this up. And we're just going to watch this and see if it starts to discolor or we get anything off. We're going to see how it sounds. And uh, there's really no other way to do this but one piece at a time. Um, you know, i got to rule out the power tubes before I go down the rabbit hole of their power scaling. I shouldn't say power scaling. That's actually a trademark to London Power, London Amps up in Canada. I don't know what Marshall's calling it. Uh, power scaling has be become a Q-tip or a Kleenex in the vocabulary. But it is a variable voltage circuit uh, that I have not seen other people do. Um, I don't see any fundamental flaw with it, but maybe there is one and we'll discover it through this. So let me solder this in place and we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got it plugged in. I'm going to a, to an 8 ohm speaker. I've got the master at zero. I've got the channel gain volume at zero because first I want to see if there's a, a problem just with the DC supply with, a, with no signal applied. I don't want to introduce any potential oscillations or signal weirdnesses to it. So we're going to power this on and I've got a current limiter in place because they they don't have this HT supply fused. If there was a fuse in the HT supply it would typically be right before this resistor which would save this resistor and tell us if there was a problem without going through resistors. Marshall did not do that. They are protecting the uh, HT supply secondaries of the power transformer, but not the stuff on the board. So what we're really going to do is just watch this resistor and see if it uh, starts to discolor. So let's do that in real time. I'm going to do some measurements real fast. On this side, 250.5. Three volts, 235.4 on that side. Now that's with the current limiter. I'll turn that off in a little while. So those voltages will be a bit, little, little bit low. I'm going to pause here in the recording, though it's still going to heat up, and I'm going to get my calculator up uh, to calculate the, the power through that resistor with the voltage drop once I turn the current limiter off. Okay, I got some good heat coming out of the chassis, just radiant heat from those power tubes now. Uh, but there's no discoloration on that resistor yet. So, I'm going to turn off the current limiter. I'm going to measure the DC on the resistor and the drop across it and see what the dissipation is. 277, 258, so that's 19, that says, my calculator says that should be dropping 2.5 watts, and it's a 2 watt resistor. Let me verify my measurements there. Seventeen point four seven. Let me do that more accurately than nineteen. Two point oh three. So I'm wondering if Marshall just uh, was way too optimistic in the rating of that resistor. 
it's only 150 ohms, so it's not going to have a big voltage drop. I do have that 6.3 watt resistor handy. I just want to know if uh, things are good. Now let's see what happens as I change the power scaling, the variable voltage. Is there going to be a bigger surge? Let's go from the high power to the medium power. And now across that resistor. Six point nine volts. Now it's point three watts. Let's go to the low power. Three and a half volts. That's gonna be even less. Yeah. 0.08 watts. So that tells me that the variable voltage stuff is not contributing to the problem. But the uh, high power mode, we're back in high power mode now, is right on the edge of what a 2 watt resistor can handle. So let me pause here and put the original output tubes in and see what the drop is with those. Twenty seven volts. As opposed to seventeen. We power it off for a second. Okay. With the old output tubes in place, the voltage drop across that 150 ohm resistor is 27 volts as opposed to the 17.4 with the uh, different output tubes. And that 27 volts across that results in a 4.86 voltage drop. I'm sorry, 4.86 watts on that two watt resistor. So that explains the problem we were having and why that Timpton resistor two watts burned up or started to burn up the same way the original 150 ohm. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to get a new pair of EL34s for this and we are going to put in uh, a higher wattage resistor. I don't think that this 6.3 watts physically is necessarily the best choice. Just be a lot of mass and strain. So I'm going to order a three watt or a smaller low mass five watt uh, for that spot and because uh, i think even with the correct you know with a different pair of tubes that did not have the problem we were still right above uh, two watts and that was at idle so i don't think a two watt resistor is the best choice for this design i think marshall is a little optimistic on two watts but it's really nice to know that in this relatively inexpensive amplifier, I don't have to go in here and pull the board and change out a MOSFET or a whole bunch of stuff. It's all limited to the output tubes and one relatively inexpensive resistor. Even if I spend a whole 45 cents for a 3-watt resistor, I'm going to try to get a 5-watt in there, though.